the last video we discussed about Newton's first law of motion. If you have not seen yet, go and click on the i button. Today we will talk about inertia and its types. Also we will see the relationship between inertia and mass which is the extension of Newton's first law of motion. But before starting, if you have not subscribed my channel, then hit the subscribe button and bell icon for the further updates of the coming videos. Let's get started. Watch this video till the end. It will worth your time. Have you ever wondered when you sit in a bus and as soon as the bus starts, the upper part of your body feels a sudden jerk? Also, when the bus moves in a uniform velocity and the bus driver suddenly applies the brake, again your upper part of the body feels the same jerk. Also, jerk is felt when the bus takes a sharp turn. Your body takes to move in a particular direction. Now, the question is, why is this happening? All this happens due to inertia. But what is inertia? The tendency of the object to resist the change in state of motion is called it as inertia or the tendency of the object to remain in same state of motion is called it as inertia. Inertia is of three types, inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. For example, if you shake a tree, some leaves of the tree fall down. Why? Because of inertia, the leaves of the tree are in the state of rest. But when you shake the tree, the tree is in motion. Leaves of the tree opposes the change in state from rest to motion and hence the leaves detach from the branch and fall down. This type of inertia when the body tries to be in rest only is called it as inertia of rest. Even in our previous example, as soon as the bus starts, you feel a jerk because of inertia due to rest. Our body opposes the change of state from rest to motion and hence we feel the jerk. The tendency of the object to remain in the same state of rest is called as inertia due to rest. Suppose you switch off your fan. What do you observe? Do the fan suddenly stops? No. For a while it moves and then it stops. Why? When the fan is on, the fan is in the state of motion. But when we switch off the fan, the fan opposes the change in state from motion to rest. Fan tries to be in the motion even if it is switched off. Similarly, in the previous example, when the brakes are applied in the bus, our body tries to be in the state of motion and opposes to be at rest and we feel a jerk. This type of inertia is called it as inertia of motion. Hence, the tendency of the object to remain in motion is called it as inertia due to motion. When a car takes a turn in a curved road, your body moves towards the center of the curved path. This is because of inertia of direction. Your body tries to be in same direction of motion, but as soon as you take a turn, your body tries to be in same direction of motion and opposes the change in the direction of motion. Thus, the tendency of object to be in same direction of motion is called it as inertia of direction. And hence, this is what Newton said. Object tries to stay in same state of motion unless some external unbalanced force acts on it. And this is what Galileo said. Object always tries to be in same state of motion. Hence, Newton's first law is also called Galileo's law of inertia. Inertia depends on the mass of the object. More is the tendency of the object to resist the change in state of motion more is the mass. In other words, we can say that mass is a measure of amount of inertia. The amount of inertia present in an object is nothing but a mass. It tells us about the 
mass for example what do you think what is easy to move bicycle or train yes you are correct it is bicycle why because the opposition offered by train to change the state from rest to motion is more as compared to bicycle hence in other words mass is a measure of amount of inertia of object more the object is resistant to change the state of motion more is the mass of the object we also call this mass as inertial mass in quantum physics we cannot measure the mass of the particle but we can measure how much resistant that particle is to motion and hence by which we can determine the mass of that particle newton's second law gives us the equation to measure the magnitude of this inertial mass but up till then if you think this video is helpful then like share and subscribe my channel thank you for watching take care goodbye